House File 2800. Representative Hurtas, would you like to move that your bill be laid over for possible inclusion in the Property Tax Division Report? Thank you, Madam Chair, and that is my motion. I'd like to have this bill possibly laid over for inclusion. Thank you, uh, Representative Hurtas. With that, you may present your bill. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and uh, members of the committee. Uh, House File 28 is a bill that uh, deals with the interest rate on delinquent property taxes. For those of you who receive a property tax statement, you may have looked at the reverse side of it and noticed that if you don't pay your property taxes on time, there's both a penalty on a monthly basis and an interest rate. And these uh, both uh, kind of work in tandem and accumulate it against the unpaid balance until paid. So members, um, some historical context uh, for those who maybe were property tax payers back in the 70s, we had double digit inflation rates. And uh, it's my recollection that uh, way back then, uh, the interest rate was raised on delinquent property taxes to be commensurate with the market at that time. Uh, subsequently, um, our market has changed and the interest rates have been extraordinarily low for a very long time. And uh, this uh, minimum interest rate still remains in statute. And so to that uh, is what this bill is trying to address and uh, make it uh, less expensive for people to pay their delinquent property taxes and to redeem uh, their property if they should find themselves in foreclosure. And with that, Madam Chair, I do have uh, Mr. Ron Elwood, who has been working on this issue for some time. And Mr. Elwood and I have uh, been aligned in uh, other past uh, issues regarding housing. And I'm happy to work with him on this uh, bill. And uh, he's uh, somewhere in the um, Hollywood square tier of people <laughs> We're looking at that. So if you, Madam Chair, if you'd call on Mr. Elwood, I'm sure he'd be able to give you some more context. Thank you, Representative Hurtas. Mr. Elwood, please state your name for the record and proceed. Thank you, you Madam would. Chair and members. Uh, Ron Elwood uh, with Legal Aid. And uh, first, I just want to thank Representative Hurtas for carrying this bill. It's always a pleasure to work with him. Uh, and Chair Joachim, thank you so much for hearing it and co-authoring it. I really appreciate it. Um, this statute was put in place back in 1990 when the 30-year fixed interest mortgage rate was 10.13. Um, just by contrast, the rate as of December 2nd, 2021 was 3.05. Um, and the rate uh, has not reached double digits in, since November 1991. Under the current statute, uh, annually, the Department of Revenue is uh, obligated to set the interest rate uh, based on a, uh, a six-month, uh, the prime rate charged by banks during a six-month period uh, ending on September 30th. And that, that as I said, the rate, uh, the most recent rate was 3.05. Um, but the law says that if the rate is lower than 10%, then the rate shall be 10%. So in fact, it's a floor of 10%, which obviously is exceedingly high, so out of step with current rates. And uh, the reason that this is so important is because it creates a barrier for homeowners to repurchase their homes once they hit tax forfeiture. And of course, nobody wants the counties, nobody wants the, the, the homes to, to go into tax forfeiture. It's much better if the homeowner can redeem. And so that is the purpose of this bill. I wanna thank the Association of Minnesota Counties and uh, MICA as well for uh, their help on this bill and their support of the bill. Happy to answer any questions. Appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Elwin. I want to note that Representative Hassan has arrived um, and also that we opened up um, to, uh, testimony to members of the public and no one has signed up. Um, members, are there any questions for Representative Hurtas? Representative Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this could be for Mr. Elwood or Representative Hurtas. Um, I had some folks contact me asking about the process, this entire process of buying back forfeited property. 
And they were saying that somebody could make a minimal payment, $100 a month or something, to keep keep their the property from going into foreclosure. Then I talked to some assessors and auditors, and they said, no, there's a three-year process where you can establish a payment plan to get back in, in uh, current, current status. So, Mr. Elwood, what is the process for a, a person or a family trying to get property back out of foreclosure? If you could generally give us uh, how it's done. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Anderson, uh, for that question. Thank you, Chair. You came. Um, you know, there's there's several ways that property can go into foreclosure. Probably the most frequent is for non-payment of a mortgage. Uh, however, <clears throat> you can also uh, go into uh, forfeiture for non-payment of property taxes. Um, what you alluded to, uh, many counties do have a program where you come in and you sign what they call a confession of judgment. Uh, you sign a confession of judgment that you do owe the money, and then you enter into a payment plan. Um, as is the case with, with residential property, you have to be delinquent seven years for the property uh, to be foreclosed on. And with other classes of property, it's usually three years. So <clears throat> those are kind of the triggers. And usually the remedies, uh, you really you really don't, uh, you start the foreclosure process or the foreclosure process has started, but you really don't forfeit the property until after sheriff sale. And even then you still have some redemption periods. But what this bill is aiming to do is to make it less cumbersome and less costly to uh, get current and to get your property tax paid and and uh, not be a barrier to keeping your property. Thank Elwood. you, Representative Hurtaz. Uh, Mr. Elwood, did you have anything else to add? No, I mean, I, I think uh, only that I think uh, Representative Anderson was the, the point that he made where the counties will enter into a payment agreement with the homeowner. Um, the objective is obviously they want the properties to stay with the homeowner, get the property taxes paid. So they're going to be as, as lenient as they can to try to get get that uh, homeowner back in the home. So I think the payment agreement piece is, is really what the, the fundamental way to get a homeowner out of forfeiture and back into their home and current on their taxes. Representative Anderson, follow up? No, no further comments, thank you. Members, are there any further questions for either Representative Hurtas or Mr. Elwood? With that, Representative Hurtas, closing statements. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Elwood, for helping out. I uh, appreciate all of the comments from the counties and the different associations in support of the bill. And uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'll re renew my motion to have uh, House File 2800 laid over for possible inclusion. And thank you, Representative Hurtas, for having our first bill up in division this year go so smoothly. Uh, Representative Hurtas renews his motion that House File 2800 be laid over for possible inclusion in the property tax division report.